uh, in spirit, Mr. Ahmed Kathrada. Welcome. <laughs> And thank you all for being here in the third year since our founders' uh, passing. Your support is a source of great encouragement for his foundation. Many individual expressions of thanks are due and they will be conveyed by Mr. Silo Hadam, our chief executive, in his closing remarks. But a few from me at the outset. Vice Chancellor Delaray of the University of Pretoria, thank you for hosting us today. To the community of Mamelodi, thank you for receiving us. We have dedicated this 14th Nelson Mandela Annual Lecture to those from Mamelodi who lost their lives in the long and never to be forgotten struggle for the liberation of South Africa. I would love to be able to acknowledge each one individually, but that would mean reading names for a very long time. So many from this community gave their lives for the democracy South Africans are still working at. Some names loom very large in the public imagination, such as Solomon Mahlangu, Stanza Bupapi, and the Ribeiros, for example. But far more are little known, and some not known at all. So we honor them all with this lecture. In particular, we remember those who gave their lives in 1986, exactly 30 years ago, the Mamelodi 10, the Gwandebele 9, Walter Arset, Samuel Lidwaba, Reginald Kekana, Madiposo, Masugu, and I could go on and on and on. Some, though, are represented by their families today who accepted our invitation to be part of this occasion. Sitting uh, close to the, the, around the, on the front rows uh, on, on, on the right of me, uh, they are here uh, as part of this occasion. And they honor us greatly with their presence uh, today. <laughs> In making contact with them, we were privileged to listen to the stories of their lives. We learned that when you carry every day the memory of the sacrifices of your sons, daughters, husbands, wives, brothers, sisters, and grandchildren, and then at that very moment that you remember, you look at the gap of fulfillment between what is now and the dream of what they sacrifice for. Sometimes you can feel lost and even feel discarded. Then we ask, how can we live together in dignity in the face of this gap? Memory and duty and me lizi se follow. You took us by the hand to find many other families in the community who felt lost and discarded. Many mothers and grandmothers of Mamelodi are grateful to you for what you have done, and so are we. <clears throat> We are grateful to the Missing Persons Task Team of the National Prosecuting Authority and the um, Contoacies of Veterans Association for their research and data and contacts. And special thanks to Alfias Sialeza, Anthony Harlow, Bonnie Hosanna, Madeleine Fullard, Naomi Madima, Ethel Arens, Joe Ditabo, Bui, 
and, and, uh, and Sam Fenter. As is so often the case in South Africa, just finding people can be a challenge. Just putting people and their addresses on the voters' roll can somehow seem unachievable. And then one moment you are on the electoral list, the next moment you are not. One moment you are within a municipal boundary, and then you are not. One moment you exist, and the next you are lost and discarded. The dream of inclusion is swallowed up by the reality of exclusion. The effects of being lost and discarded can be devastating. Universities, schools, libraries, clinics, and business premises get banned. And here again, I could go on and on and on. And so it is that the social tapestry that we have been weaving together since 1994 and which has many beautiful spots remains difficult to complete. But we continue to weave. Our gifted young South Africans around the country show amazing entrepreneurial flair. There are civil servants across the spectrum of public service who never give up doing their best to serve the public. We do have politicians who strive to bring honor to their calling. We have business people who strive to maximize the social benefit of the wealth they have created. We have workers who are committed to the common good through enhanced productivity. We have teachers, students, and academics who endeavor to bring public attention through their research and public discussion to the inheritance of structural inequality and its resilient effects. And when they do their work well, they remind us all that these effects cannot be solved at the level at which they were created. So as we struggle with the nation state, there is much in the global order that also excludes and includes in which large portions of the world are lost and discarded. Being present in the world affirms being outside of it disempowers. None of us would ever feel lost and discarded or should feel lost and discarded. How does living together be a factor of how we feel the empowering sense of presence? I trust that it is not necessary for me to persuade you of the relevance of our theme for today's lecture, Living Together. To explore this theme and stimulate our thinking towards sustainable solutions to the challenge of living together, we have invited Mr. Bill Gates to be at our 2016 lecturer. A household name around the world and in our country, he hardly needs introduction. He has shaped and influenced social good agendas and pushed boundaries over some four decades. The shape and tra trajectory of international philanthropy is unimaginable without him. His voice is one that all of us must reckon with. Not surprisingly, our 2015 Nelson Mandela Annual Lecturer, acclaimed economist Professor Thomas Piketty, cited him and challenged him a number of times. I have no doubt that he will concentrate our minds and ignite our best passions today. It only remains for me to invite him to this lectern. Bill, we await your words and welcome you warmly to this esteemed platform. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bill Gates.